Hey there, welcome to day 1132 of What's She Up To Now? Sharon Hornelstrom here, just documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and highlighting the changes, what's different about the, the different uh, modalities and methods of distribution, methods of doing business, ways we do business, definition of business, a, a, a business offline is very different than a business online, although I contend that most offline businesses should have and ought to have at least an online presence, especially nowadays with mobile technology and everything increasing so quickly. It's important that we have that. So today I'm going to just summarize the content that I create every day. Just finished the sixth 30 plus day get up and go challenge last, well, this week, today, it's just this week, Wednesday, we finished that. And I am rolling into and doing a, a training with Steve Larson and uh, called Make Launches Great Again, which I love participating in his, his trainings. Every once in a while, I get an opportunity to, lots of times I'm too busy to, but it's some, he's somebody I admire, I follow, I've know, I know, I've, I met him when I first joined the ClickFunnels organization as part of my certification there. So it's somebody that I like to watch his, his trajectory, how he s breaks things down and the strategies that he uses, the methods that he uses. He goes really deep in certain areas and aspects of marketing, which for me, I never learned in school. I've actually got a degree in marketing. I don't tell people that very often because I do a really bad job of marketing. I don't market very much. It's what I do do and I would say Steve and Russell Brunson were both very uh, big proponents of pushing me over the edge to do this uh, is video I do a lot with video but I don't market in my videos I share a lot of content in my videos which is something after making launches great again I will probably change and be more specific and more intentional with my particular creation of content and video however there are some things that I do that are unique and 100% me and the way I do them because that fits with how I want to show up in the world and what I want to share with the world. So my challenges, for example, I do challenges in a very different way than, than most anybody else does. Probably because I've been doing challenges for decades and much longer than other people who are just using them for marketing purposes. Great tool for marketing, great way to get people an introduction into what you do and how you can serve them. But, um, to me, it's a difference of how deep you can actually go with people and we'll go with people uh, in, in different areas and aspects of helping them to move forward in what it is that they're trying to create. So I do my challenges very differently every year. This is my fourth year in a row now of doing a 365 day challenge. I have did, uh, before I even entered this world, the online world in particular, I was always doing challenges. I had a sudden cardiac arrest in 2010, which means I dropped dead and realized that paying attention to my health had to take a higher priority than it had been the previous two or so decades. And that if I didn't take care of myself, I wouldn't be around to to see my grandchildren, see my children grow up, do anything. I just wouldn't be here. And I decided that meant massive lifestyle changes. So in 2010, I made massive business and lifestyle changes. That was the beginning of a huge transition for me from running around like a chicken with my head cut up, cut up, cut off to doing things more intentionally and more on purpose. And that, um, after my divorce, led to me doing online business versus traditional, strictly offline businesses. And although I've had 35 or 40, I guess I'm up to 47 years of business experience and corporate experience now, uh, the last three to four years of that have been 99% online. Now, helping people in the offline world, but doing things online in the internet marketing world, the internet automation and systems world, which automation and systems have been my thing my entire life and career. Um, it's just been taking those offline systems and automating and enhancing what we can using online systems and automation and processes and procedures that, that can and should be automated so we can spend our time and energy on things that are really important, the money-making activities, the things that we absolutely love to do. There are things in, in each of the businesses I've been involved in throughout my life that I love to do and things that I don't like to do. Jobs always and businesses and careers always involve stuff we like to do, stuff we don't like to do. So if we can offline the things we don't like to do and delegate those things to other people or create systems that have them happen automatically, it's always a lot more fun and feels better. So 
I'm in the process now of my online life, now that I've figured out what it is I'm doing and where I want to go and what I want to do and how I want to show up, offloading or delegating or automating the pieces of that that I can. Now, there are some pieces of business offline as well as online that I absolutely positively will not delegate, that I, I maintain responsibility and control for. Those are the vision and the direction of my businesses, my business now uh, and always has been. This is the direction we're going. The overall big picture has always been my responsibility. I, I don't see giving that up anytime soon because I'm creating my life, my business, my world, and I need to be in charge of that. No one's going to do that for me. Uh, with respect to um, other systems and other things, getting help with things, I'm definitely working on that and doing that this year in particular. Uh, last year was sort of a hunker down. How can you contribute? How do you get up and go and keep moving with all the change and the craziness that's going on around you? This year for me personally is about how do I take what I'm creating and what I have created and launch that. Thus my interest in Make Launches Great Again with Steve Larson. How do I do that in a way that makes sense for me and the life that I want to create and live, the business I want to live? Uh, for a couple of years, when I first came online, I was pajama grandma. And it wasn't until COVID that I sort of released and let go of that aspect of myself, pajama grandma. And my point was to say, I can do what I want, when I want, where I want, with whomever I want, wearing what I want. And in a lot of cases, it was my pajamas. Well, then COVID hit and I was like, all right, now there are millions of people stuck at home, maybe working from home with their kids, maybe not working with their kids. And presenting myself in my pajamas like that's a good thing, which it is a good thing to me. I love walking around in my cozy bathrobe still. But that wasn't the way I wanted to show up in the world because I didn't think it was particularly helpful because I think one of the things we need to do, especially if we're working from home, is continue to have the identity that we want to, to have. If we want to be professional and if we're working business to business and doing different things, we still want to dress up. We still want to show up. We still want to be ourselves even when we're at home. Remember in college, every Tuesday, I don't know why, but my, my freshman year, I decided that every Tuesday I was going to dress up and dress in a professional way to go to classes and things. I don't know why I decided. I can't remember back then why I decided it, but pretty much college was a lackadaisical jeans, go to class, jeans and sweatshirts. I think we were past overalls back then because it was a long time ago, but there was a phase when people wore overalls and dockers and, and, uh, what are those called? Cargo pants and things. And I, I have decided that once a week, no matter what, I was going to dress up and show up how I wanted to be in the future. And people gave me funny looks, but they also treated me differently on Tuesdays sometimes than they did other days because I showed up with the identity that I wanted to be after I was done with school, not during school. So it was, it was interesting. And then I laughed because in high school, whoops, lost my earbud. In high school, my son did the same thing on his, I think, 16th birthday. He decided he was going to wear a suit to school. High school, right? 16th birthday, high school. He goes in full suit and tie to school that day. I don't, I, it was a great day, I guess, but <laughs> he just decided he was going to dress up. He was going to show up like he wanted to be in the future. So maybe that's something that, that carries over. It's just an inkling inside of us that there's an identity that we want to live out and who we're becoming and who we really want to be. And if we practice showing up like that, it makes a difference. Now I say that in my super duper casual shirt today, right? But not seeking to impress, I'm just seeking to share on this segment in particular. So today, our supersize your business, uh, idiom of the day or proverb. I'm doing 100 days of proverb at the beginning of 2021. I've been doing proverbs for, I think today was 732 after I started counting. Now I, I, I only keep a reference in for me so I keep track of, of what number I'm on to track. I'm, I have a tracking sheet of all of my, my videos and my content and my links and things. So in case I ever had to go back or want to refer to them or repurpose or use them for something else, I can actually find the, the raw files. So that's why I number them. But uh, I like to do, and I started doing it, I actually started doing it as I was getting organized, part of my divorce, getting organized and, and moving out of my old house. I was like, all right, I have to have something I can do every single day to, to touch base with my supersize your business folks and keep in touch with them. What can I do that would add some value, but also be different and kind of fun for me to do. And it ends up 
that there's like at least 25,000 different proverbs or idioms in the English language. An idiom is just something that means something different when the words are put together than it does when the words are taken separately. So for example, today was haste makes waste. What does haste mean? It means to hurry up. Make means to create something. Waste is something that we don't necessarily really want to create. So when we say haste makes waste, it of course means something different than those three words taken individually. It means doing something too quickly can cause us to make mistakes which can result in time or energy or money or effort or results or rework or some kind of resources being wasted. Um, and any of these idioms, any of these expressions that have been around for hundreds of years absolutely positively impact us or at least people that we know and interact with on a regular basis. Rushing, you know, we can all think of rushing. So that was our idiom today, haste makes waste. And I talked about examples from my personal life, examples about relationships, examples about our kids wanting to grow up too fast, examples about uh, systems and processes and procedures and why we have them and why we create them for our lives and our businesses. Processes and procedures in our life are just habits and rituals and routines that we follow, right? And why do we do that? Because it makes our life easier. It gets us to do things automatically, which makes them easier and faster and less painful. And it also moves us toward the results we want in different areas and aspects of our, our life. So we do things automatically like brush our teeth, go to the bathroom, uh, have good hygiene, uh, do certain things every single day. Some people have morning rituals. Some of us, I would say some of us, have morning rituals and routines. Some of us have evening rituals and routines. Some of us have habits and routines and things that we do throughout the day. All little things, but they add up to move us toward our goals, the big things that we want to have in our life. So that was our Supersize Your Business Challenge. Our Do One Thing Every Day That Centers You. I, I think I've mentioned that I do an annual personal focus or improvement. I, I, this is my fourth year. And I started doing it uh, when I first came online. Not quite, it was probably a year into being online, over a year of being on the in the internet world. and. Over and over again, um, Steve Larson, Russell Brunson, and, you know, mentors and peers and coaches told me, you have to publish, you have to publish, you have to publish, you have to, really they said you have to create video, but you have to publish some way, shape or form. And you know, there's a lot of talk of podcasting and, and emails, all kinds of different things online. In the online world, there's like all these things you have to do to be successful. And you get into this belief that you have to do it all yourself, which I fell into and I'm like, oh, I, I can't even do it all myself till I learn it all myself. Well, in this information age, it is absolutely positively impossible to learn everything yourself and do everything yourself. You've got to be open and willing to team up with people, ask for help, hire people to do different aspects of what you need done. But you absolutely positively, just like the offline world, hint, hint, you, it's not really, you can do everything yourself. But the results that you get will only be to a certain level. If you want to go beyond that level, which most of us do, you need to own up to the fact that you can't do it all and you don't even want to do it all, right? I remember um, struggling at certain times during growth phases of my businesses and I would find that whenever new things were coming on, I would automatically take on the responsibility of all those tasks. And then I'd start to get more and more overloaded, or more and more frustrated, more and more overwhelmed to the point that I would say, stop, I need help. And then I would go out and I would find and I would get the help that I needed. But I always went a little too long doing it all myself or doing the new areas of responsibility myself before I got the right help in. Part of because I didn't want to hire the wrong people. I didn't want to hurry up just because I had a current need and a higher demand on myself to put someone into that place that might not have been a perfect fit. So this year is doing one thing every day that centers me. And I think for 2021, just like for 2020, it was do one fun thing every day. It somehow the perfect resource comes to me, even if I don't realize it at the time. Now, I wasn't super duper excited about doing the book, Do One Thing Every Day That Centers You. I was super excited to and scared to do one thing every day that, um, that scares you. That was to, about expanding my comfort zone. That one I needed when I first did it. The next one was do everything every day that makes you happy. And I wanted to be happier. So that was a fun year too. And then 2020 came along, COVID. I had my granddaughter and I was uh, taking care of her during the day while her mom and, and dad worked. And then uh, doing my own things on the side. So fun was perfect because we needed to find and we wanted to find and do fun things every day. Now, 
the cool thing about hanging out with a four-year-old is you're going to find ways to have fun every single day. And you don't need a book to tell you how to do that. But we had it anyway. And it was a fun little guideline. And then this year, I picked up last summer at the cabin, do one thing every day that centers you. This is a, a series of books that I stumbled across accidentally and has turned out to be a nice little resource for me. Now, I also have written my own book. It's called a flip book that I could do. Maybe next year I'll do that or do my own thing. But I think there's value in using other people's tools. For, for example, today's and yesterday's was about, uh, let me just grab my magnifying glass. It was about uh, doing things that are your duty and having to do things, things that we have to do that we don't necessarily want to do, but it's our, I say responsibility instead of duty. If I say something's my duty, I feel forced to have to do it. But if I say it's my responsibility, I am owning up and saying, hey, this is my responsibility. I don't have to do it. I, I, I do have to do it, but I tell myself I want to do it. And there's a big difference for me when I want to do something versus when I have to do it. There's a big difference for me when I want to do something than when I should do it. Didn't used to be, but over the years I've discovered that there is. So some of them, a lot of them, of course, will stretch me. And that's part of why I do this challenge because I never would have thought of talking about, and maybe I would have, but I would have probably thought about responsibility, but about my duty without pain. I never would have thought about ways to do my duty that made it not feel painful at all. Even though I do that in my life with responsibility, I might not have thought about it about duty. So it takes it to another level of me understanding and getting to know myself better and centering and, and looking for outside perspectives that mostly we never look for, right? We go through our lives and that's where the growth happens for all of us is on the edges of our comfort zone, on the edges of things we wouldn't have normally been exposed to or think about. And so again, 2021 has been kind of a crazy year already. And so I think that this is, will turn out and prove to be just as applicable and just as perfect for me and the people that want to participate as well as uh, the, the three previous years. And, I, and I'm excited about that. I know a lot of people pick a, a word of the day or a word of the week or a word of the month or, or now a word of the year. People are doing that. And I didn't realize I've been doing that, but I guess I've been doing that for a long time, especially for the last four years since I came online, because it gives me, number one, something to warm my voice up on every day because I'm making videos every day. And sometimes I make them usually first thing in the morning because that fits my lifestyle best and that makes sure I get them done. I'm gonna be traveling at the end of this month all through the middle of May. So it's gonna be interesting to see how do I work my content creation and my daily videos into that traveling schedule. I don't know yet. I'm working on a plan right now and working on that and thinking about pre, pre-planning and pre deciding that I will make it work no matter what. And I usually do. If I'm traveling, I make it work no matter what. It's just that the last year now, we've been home and working strictly from home. So it's been really easy to do my daily content. There's not a lot of interruptions or change going on. So it'll be fun to travel. I haven't traveled since November of 2019 now because I got sick December of 2019 into the new year, 2020. And so I was not traveling or going anywhere. And that was before we knew that COVID was a thing. I'm pretty sure I had it back then because I was sicker than a little dog. And I don't want our dogs to ever be sick, but I was definitely down and out for a, a good three weeks. So, haste makes waste. Do your duty. Find ways to automate and do your duty. I'm doing a training, a three-day training. And I'm also doing a couple other people's challenges. And, and then a new reading challenge with Avil Beckford. And it's fun. It's, it's to solve a problem. And so... Instead of picking a business problem or things that I would normally choose, I am choosing to read five books about keto and intermittent fasting because as part of my duty to take care of myself, yesterday we had to try something that we've never done. It's our duty, but try something, do it for the first time. And how does it make you feel? Well, I did keto for the first time yesterday, so we'll see how that makes me feel. I've been talking about it for a while, but I'm actually you know, doing it and investigating it and looking into it and seeing, is this a fit for me, my lifestyle, and my current situation and my, my health and things? Because I got, you know, like a lot of people, as we get older, we have certain things we need to take into consideration. And I want to make sure I'm not going to do anything that will mess up my heart health because my box is getting to the end of its useful life and it's going to have to be replaced. And my... Uh, other things, inflammation and other things I've had for lots of time. My vision, of course, is always a consideration. But I don't think that has a whole lot to do with whether you eat keto or vegetables or 
proteins or what you do. So we'll see. All right. That is all I've got today. Working on what, what's next for the Get Up and Go Challenge. I was thinking today it might be the April Get Up and Go Challenge might be a Get Up and Go for business owner challenge. It might be strictly for business owners and all of the areas and aspects of our life with respect to being a business owner. I'll let you know as I roll that out as part of Make Launches Great Again. I'll let you know what it's going to be exactly, but I'm, I'm thinking that is what it's going to be. If you're interested, hit me up. It's going to be on the regular Get Up and Go Challenge page. And we have a private group, the Get Up and Go Challenge group, of course, where all of the past challenges are in there, all the 30-day challenges. So there are six 30-plus day challenges in there. There's a no-nonsense November, every day of the month of November, for most of November, I think every day. We did a, a just a life lesson and a, and a business lesson. And a, we talked about a topic that uh, is important and it's about no-nonsense, right? What what's the truth about certain areas and aspects of our life that sometimes people won't tell you. They'll sugarcoat it and then they just leave you to figure it out yourself, which is never the best way to find stuff out, right? I remember having a baby and being pregnant and you know we had the one book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, but even that didn't tell you the real scoop about a lot of stuff that could happen during that process and it happened so fast and you changed so much up and down, right? That uh, I wish that I had lived in the days of the internet. My daughter just had a baby and her experience was so different than what mine was. They had a lot more information, which I think if we have information and ideas and we know things are normal, it takes a lot of the fear and doubt and worry out of a, out of a, a situation. All right, that's all I've got. Go out, have an absolutely amazing day. If I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below or direct message me. I probably will stop making that offer pretty soon here because I am starting to take on more commitments and getting busier. But for right now, I like to be open and available to people. Just like corporate America, open door policy. Right now I have an open door policy, uh, but uh, that'll probably change soon because things are getting more demanding. All right, have a great day. And I'll of course be with you tomorrow. Maybe not with, uh, with unicorns and hearts and rainbows raining down on me, but I thought this was a fun one thinking of my granddaughters today. All right.